Hi there, my name is Dave and in this video I'm going to share with you techniques and tips on how I did the eyes for Emma Willis. So let's take a look. Right, first of all get a centre point of the image. Place the corner of the eyes we want in relation to the centre point between the eyes and then mark in the width between the eyes in relation to the size of the eye itself. And then from there you're working on angles, imagining the angles and then drawing around the eyes. Also using the pencil horizontally uh, to see the alignment of the eyes and where it falls. And keeping your hands really far away from the point so it comes loose, so it's more of a relaxed way of drawing. Uh, you notice that I'm using the angle of that centre mark to find where the corner of the eye is. And then working from that. So it's, imagine, it's just getting the angles in relation to everything else. It's just, all it is is practice really. A good thing to do use is a putty rubber as well, because it's, it, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on the rubber to actually erase the mark, where if you use some of them, erasers the they are can damage the um, surface so I suggest getting one of those putty rubbers They're really handy so once you've got one eye more or less drawn is to start on the other eye and then just making sure the corner of that other eye is in alignment with the, the one you've just done use your pencil horizontally to check with the image so you can see the alignment See how it falls. Using that centre mark there to see the relation where the pupils is as well. So, so instead of using a grid, all you're using is one little centre mark. So that's why I said in the me uh, drawing the outline video you start off with grid and eventually eventually you just have no grid at all but what you have got is just one point which is the center of the image and you work out from there for how big you want it that's how i work anyway and what doing it free and it gives so much freedom because you straight away you connect into the energy of the subject where if you're drawing a, a grid all you're doing is, is connecting to the squares and where the relationship is the squares, so you're not really feeling the portrait. But with it being freehand, straight away you're connecting to the energy of the subject, which this is what I like to feel. So. Right, here we've got a selection of pencils. Um, I'm just putting the text just to show you which one so you can actually freeze the video so you can make a note of what these pencils are. Uh, basically I just use those three brands. Right, what I'm doing first is using very light marks just to get the basic structure in. Um, not worrying too much about detail, but just getting a feel for what where things are. Just to make sure it's like a blocking stage, uh, moving things around if it needs to be moved, but not being too heavy with the pastel at this stage. Right, what I've used here is a, is a dark green rather than going straight in with a light black or or dark brown, just so you get the area right first before you go heavy with the right colour. 
Right, so how I sharp my pencils is just chafering the points, uh, just to keep those nice and sharp while I'm doing the detail. Obviously if the, the actual point gets too short, I have to cut through the wood, but basically more, more or less I just keep doing the chafering, the actual pasta itself. Right, so we're just using red, blue and yellow, and then white, um, and secondary colours as well, you'll notice there. But just building up the structure, the colours and what have you, just getting the basic shapes in there. Uh, later on you'll see me going in with richer colours, uh, which I choose a colour that looks similar to it. But when you first start, it's a good exercise anyway, just to do these, just using three colours, it gets used to colour mixing as well. Just taking your time and just keeping awareness of the whole of the image and not just focusing on the eye as you're drawing the eye but you're still aware of everything else um, so it brings more personality into the drawing and basically just blending uh, sometimes I put the white in first and then I blend the colour on top um, so the white shines through then And shadows uh, for the eye there is just blue and orange making sure the darks are as dark as possible which will give that 3d look as well so um, it's always good to get those really in depth of black So putting the white in then glaze then keep putting the white on then glaze again and keep building it up that way uh, and eventually get to the right uh, colour. To get the skin tone smoother I'm using my fingers a lot but just keep working on it, I keep layering after layer after layer it starts to get smoother. Always looks a bit harsh and grainy to start with but you just really just got to just keep working on it, it eventually comes. For the shadows in the skin I'm using the red and green. Now if it's more orange skin colour I would be using the blue or if it's a yellowish colour I'd be using purple so it's a complementary colours to make the shadows which gives a clean shadow so it's always worth playing about with that. For the whites of the eyes I use like a pencil that is similar colour to a Prussian blue and then orange which is the complementary colour. This always seems to give a nice white of the eyes uh, colour, also good for the teeth as well. If you feel that you're getting value from this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free and you're sure not to miss any future videos. If there's any videos you would wish me to produce for you, please leave a comment below and let me know. I will be producing more short videos on say how to draw ear or how to draw mouth etc or how to draw a smile and teeth so 
be sure to look out for those. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it very much.